Howdy folks, today we are back with the Technics 8055. This is the big brother of the 44 that we uh, recently finished and got listed. And this one is blowing the main fuse uh, every time you turn it on. So I've already gone through and troubleshot the kind of the, the power circuit leading up through the uh, through the switch, through the transformer, things like that, and uh, got it down to it's definitely when the uh, power comes into the back of the board, the uh, whether you want to call it uh, like 33 or 66 uh, AC back there. Uh, when you have either side hooked up, it uh, blows the blows the fuse. So today we're going to look where we probably should have started in the first place, which is uh, whether one of the uh, Darlington packs is bad. So the pretty much the easiest way to check these out is so you can see here, these are the pins on the uh, on the Darlington packs. This is one, two, three, four, five, six and seven aren't connected to anything. And then eight, nine and ten. And then over on the other side for the other channel, it's one, two, three. And then the four that aren't connected, then eight, nine, ten. So the easy way to check if one of these uh, one of these packs is bad is if there's continuity between pins two and three. So it's these two here and these two here. So that's where we're that's where we're gonna start and see if uh, a, a blown power pack could be our could be our problem. So we've got the the meter in diode mode. I'm hoping you can hear that, um, or not diode mode, but uh, continuity mode. And so if we check two and three here, this guy's good. And if we check two and three here, that guy's bad. All right, so the best path here is going to be to take this side out. I'm trying to decide if I want to uh, go through the whole rigmarole of taking a heat sink out and taking out both of the packs at the same time. Or actually, I kind of like my my trick with the uh, angle driver and the uh, and the uh, whoo tired. Uh, and the needle nose pliers. So let's see, I think I'm gonna go ahead and desolder and uh, start the process of taking this, taking this bad pack out. <clears throat> we'll remove it and uh, replace it with uh, resistors like we had done before on the uh, 44 and see if we can power on and check this thing out. All right, seems like all of the pins are loose now. These are the uh, two lines that run back here for the uh, high voltage AC coming in. Sure, it work on the right side here. Okay, so it's this guy here. It's the one that's bad.
Okay, that was awesome. Now, that comes right out. Easy peasy. Okay, so what we're gonna do here is we are going to put a couple of 1K resistors across uh, one and three and eight and 10 in order to check the rest of the circuit, see if it'll, uh, see if it'll power up for us. Kind of set that there and we'll bend it down into place. Once it's fixed. Okay, that was the easy one. Let's see what we can do here. I don't really want this sticking out the bottom. Okay, so trying to look at how much of a lip there is. There is a decent lip here, but I think it's still gonna work best to well, no, if I put too much of a hook on them, then it's, you know, potentially going to rub somewhere else. Let's see. Yeah, it's all right to have it resting against the, to have the body of it resting against the heat sink as long as the, uh, Leads aren't touching the heat sink. All right, that should be good enough to do some testing. So if we just want to make sure this is working. So I still don't have my wire wrap tool in, so this is gonna be pretty janky, but it should at least work well enough to tell us if it's uh, gonna pop the, pop the fuse or not. So we'll do a few wraps there. And this one is, 66 and before this thing considers going out to anyone I will have acquired a wire wrap tool to reattach these properly Okay, so this one's 65. Okay. So that's that piece. And let's see, do we have a good fuse in here right now? off and we will plug it in and let's see if the fuse pops immediately upon turning it on still no okay let's take a look and see does power up. It 
does indeed power up. Let's see if I can carefully tip it up so that you can see it. That's the first sign of life that we've had out of this guy, so quite happy to see that. All right, so it's the left channel that's gone. So I'm gonna hook up a speaker to the right channel. And we're gonna see if this thing can make noise. this up here, make sure we're turned all the way down, set to aux, balanced all the way to the right. Yeah, she wants to live. That is a good sign of life as far as I'm concerned. I'm gonna go ahead and call this one done for today. I'm gonna have to pick up another uh, STK0050 and uh, we'll see how decent quality the things we can get are. And yeah, it looks like other than that, we're gonna do some cleaning on all of the contacts, uh, have to clean up Obviously the uh, volume switch is crusty, the uh, selector switch is crusty. Uh, yeah, so it's uh, pretty pretty rough in a lot of areas, but uh, we'll be able to take care of a lot of that with, uh, with deoxit and that which we can't just uh, deoxit. I mean, we'll clean up the, uh, clean up the front uh, cosmetically, see what we can do about everything being just dirty and grody here. And uh, yeah, hopefully this will wind up coming out looking pretty nice. Uh, may take a few days, but uh, should be a fun little project. And then we'll uh, get it listed like everything else and uh, moving on to its new owner. So yeah, I think that's about gonna do it for today. And uh, we will see you in the next one.